Welcome to Africa Express. Today we are going to Ghana. We are going to be talking about African multiculturalism and mental health. With us to discuss this topic today is Hannah Nana Akoma, who is a multiculturalist and a clinician. A mental health clinician. Mental health clinician. You are welcome to Africa Express. Thank you very much for having me today. Um, in your work as a clinician, um, you bring a different approach to treating mental health. Could you please explain why diversity or ethnicity should be considered when treating mental health? It's fundamentally very important that when we treat anybody whether you're looking at um, a medical condition or psychiatric condition, to have a very comprehensive understanding of the person. And that comprehensive understanding embodies fundamentally their culture. And the culture is a set of value systems which have been part of them and which brings to bear in their everyday behaviors. Mental health, the center piece or the central aspect of mental health is behavior. Um, and as such, when we want to be very clear to diagnose the person with mental illness and um, to set up treatment plan for the person, it is important for us to know the basis of their behavior, whether that particular behavior is implicit in um, the, the, the person's um, personality or as, as a cultural entity or it is helping us to define where pathology is a problem. So it is very, very important for us to understand the cultural background and the cultural makeup of the person. Um, when you look at mental health treatment and even in medical treatment in general, we have always put it in the mainstream um, Eurocentric um, understanding of behavior. Um, we have come to realize at the turn of last century that multicultural aspect is, is a great uh, missing piece when we're looking at cross-cultural treatment of mental illness. So that makes it very, very important for clinicians to understand not just the illness, but the aspect of culture that uh, conditions or plays a, a, a very fundamental part in the mental health and stability of the person. But does culture play any part in the diagnosis? I mean, um, would culture make a difference in terms of somebody who has, for whatever reason, is suffering from a uh, say, depression and various type of illness, uh, mental illness. Yes, you make a very important point um, in looking at the aspect of culture. Um, mental illness is like any medical condition where it goes across board. It doesn't matter what your, um, your, your color is, your religion is, it goes across board for all your human populations. And, um, and uh, the different aspects, the, the different categories of mental illness also are seen in different cultures just as much. But sometimes in the intensity and the nature of the diagnosis um, has to be understood in the medical term as, as, as much as also in the cultural aspect, because there are certain cultural behavior patterns which may be seen as um, different in looking at mainstream, say, American uh, mental health, where um, it is really different 
in its meaning to the particular group of people that you are dealing with. So um, culture is very, very important. It can lead to misdiagnosis because the person's particular behavior may not necessarily, as I said, be pathological, but because it's not very familiar to the team of clinicians who are assessing the patient, um, where the patient's um, race and um, ethnicity and culture may be different from their mainstream can assume or extrapolate their definition of mental illness in their population to affect this particular group and um, other uh, people of other cultures. So it's very, very important for us to understand the cultural background. Though we know clearly that mental health, like any medical condition, affects all populations. But as far as um, looking at the nature of the specific diagnosis that we are looking at, we have to question ourselves whether it's the right diagnosis that we are looking at based on the culture of the, of the person because the, the, the cultural aspect of it may not translate into an illness while, say, to the clinicians who are assessing the patients based on their, uh, say, mainstream American culture may see it as something unique and different where um, a, a deeper understanding is needed to find out exactly how the person is doing um, in, in, in his or her mental health. So culture is indeed very, very important. At what point you're diagnosing somebody? At what point do you say, no, this here, there's more to it. Let's start looking at culture or ethnicity. And could you give me an example of the type of behavior that you would see and say, okay, let's start looking at these other factors? Um, some of the behavior that we has come to our attention, uh, how the patient is responding to interviews or um, building up their report during the, um, the, the investigation. Um, certain cultures that we have at home where when you look at a young person, when they are speaking to an adult or somebody of authority, say a clinician or a, a doctor, um, a teacher, we normally tend to give this, have a strong sense, say in African culture, of respect. So we tend to be calm and gentle and we don't really get very involved in asking questions. Um, from the Western aspect of looking at mental illness, when a person is not that engaging, it could be misinterpreted to me that it is a pathological symptom. Whilst, um, or that it, the person is withdrawn. Or, or that the person is very, were... very depressed or intimidated, or even the person may be hallucinating and may be out of touch with reality. That is why they are not responding um, appropriately to questions. But um, again, this has become very well understood in the mental health field. That is why um, for the past um, several decades, um, cultural diversity is a very important aspect in investigating um, the diagnosis of mental illness and in treatment plan. Um. In your work, what are the cultural obstacles you see in treating mental health? The cultural aspects um, comes in a, a very um, complex way. Um, mental illness is essentially looking at people's behavior and, um, and how they are responding to their environment. Um, it is very different from, say, medical treatment where you can look at, say, diabetes and do a laboratory testing and know that um, the person has abnormal or a pattern of abnorm abnormally high level um, of, of sugar in the blood. Um, on the, when you're looking at mental illness, we don't really have 
uh, blood or real clinical testing as such. Everything is based on how the person is behaving. And so the obstacles to it is the person's behavior. If you are dealing cross-cultural counseling or cross-cultural assessment, the person's behavior is also modified by their culture. And when we do not understand that culture, we may make a big mistake of taking their behavior in a different meaning um, based on the, <clears throat> on the fact that we have the mainstream, say, American, European um, uh, definition of mental illness to really define the other. So, so the, the cultural aspect is, is a big issue. It is an area that is being studied very well um, through uh, multicultural presentations, multicultural education. Um, it can be an obstacle in, in that it, it can give to misinterpretation of the person's behavior. Um, we are going to take a short break and when we come back we're going to be looking at the danger of not looking at uh, when treating someone with mental illness, not looking at the ethnic, uh, ethnic background, cultural background, and how it could lead to misdiagnosis. Welcome back to Africa Express. We have with us Hannah Nana Akoma, who is a multiculturalist and also a mental health clinician. And we've been talking about um, diagnosing um, mental health um, within um, the ethnic community. And Nana was saying before we went on a break about um, possible misdiagnosis um, when a doctor do not look or a clinician do not um, consider uh, the et ethnic background of the individual being treated and sometimes that this could lead to a misdiagnosis. And meanwhile, the person will be taking a different medication sure. when there's nothing really wrong with that. Yeah, it's exactly. actually a, exactly. a cultural issue. Now, in some cultures, mental health is attributed to witchcrafting, right. not psychological problem. Um, what do you see as the danger of uh, looking at it from witchcraft um, perspective rather than a medical problem? As, as I mentioned, uh, mental health involves essentially behavior pattern, which forms out of um, out of norm with what we see as the normal behaviors. Um, the mental health has, we have major categories of mental health where you are looking at um, depression, anxiety, um, bipolar disorder, and the most extreme form, schizophrenia. Um, when you do the, some of the severity of these illnesses may uh, attune to what we call um, abnormal thoughts where the person may have um, troubling hallucinations or thinking out of touch with reality. And those hallucinations and um, will come in different forms and, and or into the category of psychotic behavior. Because these are to most ethnic um, African population, this is um, abnormal behavior in their definition of the uh, symptoms that a person is, is exhibiting. Uh, we tend to believe that it has to go beyond the realm of science. And in that aspect, looking at the nature of a spiritual ethnic thinking or a culture involving language, spirituality, and, and people's behavior or thought processes, we can't see how it can be a medical condition that is a, a situation that can be treated and cured, diagnosed, treated, and cured. So we have the tendency or the immediate sense of attributing it to some higher powers. And normally those higher powers, because it's a strange behavior, and to some extent can be 
uh, harmful to the individual people around them, we attribute it to a more devilish side of basis for the person. And that is what brings us to uh, witchcraft belief. Um, it is an area that needs a lot of education to the African ethnic communities, um, where we have to be very careful when we see some of these abnormal behaviors. We are educating our African uh, communities to bring our parents or loved ones to immediately see it as a medical condition. A medical condition which um, by Western technology and by um, say American system as we know it has been very well investigated into research has found connections between uh, the brains, the brain chemical functions or other situations that affect the person's reality of um, environment. Um, we need to get the understanding that if we can treat uh, everyday medical conditions, like say in, in Africa, we, uh, one of our major problems is malaria, infectious diseases are very rampant. When you look at the Western system because of high level of technology and the universality of say um, various treatments in, in infectious diseases have come under very successful control. In most African countries and third world countries, infectious diseases are very, they are still very prevalent problems where we need to continue to get treatment. Um, so we you're are very saying much that aware mental health should be also looked at as a medical condition. As, as a medical condition. condition. And that is something that hasn't come to our everyday understanding. Because this leads to neglect. Because while one is sitting there thinking is witchcraft, right. now they're treating that person with something that is con uh, completely not going to kill the, one, the person. Right. Um, you know, uh, uh, they're going to harvest, let's say. Right. You know, instead of actually diagnosing the person to what the problem is, that right. it, it, it has to be something neurologically or it, some sort of chemical imbalance, yeah, exactly. which actually needs medication. Absolutely. And meanwhile, the person still remains in the same condition. Right. We have to put this over again, um, that where we look at language, spirituality, uh, spirituality or spiritualism, and um, how we define our sense of belonging. We, we connect with ancestors as, as, as a means of psychological strength that though they are passed on, their spirit is still a strong embodiment for us. Um, it is not completely wrong for us to touch base with what our spiritual or everyday cultural experience is telling us. But where it gets a, a point where we're doing harm to the individual, we have to have the basic understanding that um, the strange behaviors that they see where in, in, in the um, collective description of it, we would say a psychotic behavior is something that is actually has been well proven to connect well with um, the physical body mainly looking at the brain function. There are certainly some conditions that are clearly imply chemical imbalance, but there are different models that also show in, uh, some attribute of the, of the body system that involves a person to um, have very um, strange or unusual behavior patterns that involves the um, psychotic or um, delusional behaviors. So what we need to bear in mind is that first the culture is a fundamental aspect that we cannot neglect. On the other hand, it also takes education that not every cultural aspect of our beliefs is something that will hold to help us. And uh, we have to stay in tune with different uh, scientific development. And particularly in the mental health aspect, we haven't done very well. We have coordinated well and got better understanding of medical conditions. At the same time, we have to know that even in mental health, though we may say mental health is still part of the body system, is still a medical situation or conditions Condition. that can be treated. 
Well, we're going to go to other aspects of what you do. You are a very strong advocate for Africa and colonialism. What we're going to do, we're going to take a short break and we'll come right back and we'll go right straight into uh, discussing um, uh, Africa and how they are portrayed in the media and African colonialism. Welcome back to Africa Express. We are talking with um, Hannah Nana Akuma, who is a multiculturalist and a mental health clinician. Before we took a uh, break, um, we were talking about, we're going to talk about other work that you do. You, um, are, very, you are a very strong advocate for Africa and colonialism or pre-colonialism and all that. Um, what do you see as a, um, as a challenge uh, in the way Africa is portrayed within the media? This has, been, okay, this has been an ongoing problem for most Africans coming here. Um, one of the culture shock that I had when I first arrived here in the mid-1970s is how we, Africa was being portrayed in very negative debasing um, level of um, our existence. Um, I was shocked about what I was seeing on the television. Though clearly we do have problems. Um, it's the 54 nation continent. Uh, it's um, a very huge continent. It used to be, be the first and the second largest continent, but now it's been even defined to be the first, um, the, the biggest continent. Um, endowed with a lot of resources. It's the richest landmass that you can see. I think with colonization and, and, and um, prior to that, we had 350 years of slavery. It has really impacted the continent to a, set, to a level that is described as the most highly colonized, severely planted continent in the world. And as such, even after we were able to get our independence, it's still taking us decades. It's going to take many more decades before we be able to catch up, to build up what we see clearly with Western society, middle class. I think I see most developing nations and developed nations by the level of how many of their citizens are being rich for basic necessities of life. And um, Africa, most African countries are nowhere close to that. And it's implicit also in other developing nations. Um, it, the, the, if you look back to what history has conveyed on Africa, our pre-colonial African history and African existence is something that was not known to most people in the world, including most of our fellow Americans. Um, I think it's an aspect that needs to be well developed. I think we need to teach African history to um, bring the knowledge to bear that um, even before um, our encounter with, the, with, the, with Western people, Africans, were pretty much engaged in very um, extended trade systems, they were building the continents, Africans were building their own cities. So in essence, we had our own history. It's, it has been said many times by um, Western um, historians and publishers that Africa has no history. But that one has been found to be without basis. I think the truth of how Africa was, um, the, the, uh, the role that uh, the Af Af African pre-colonialist, uh, that is before the colonial times, the, the leadership, the empires that they, they built. Um, the, one of the earliest empires was Ghana, and it was flourishing, I think, when Western contact took place. They saw these things, that it was flourishing with um, extensive tree systems, um, um, large cities, they have their own very complex systems of leadership where kinship was as flourishing as you see in other parts of the world. This is something that needs to be taught or we need to start to take a second look at Africa and bring its true history out. And I think by doing that, we also 
bring our chances of recognition and and it ties into everything it will tie into political aspect how we are viewed investments and development um, economic gains um, we need to let them know see our potential potential that was laid down um, 500, 600, or 1,000 years ago by our ancestors. Who do you think is responsible? Do we blame the textbook writers, the media, or the parents? I think it has a complex answer. But essentially, the knowledge was not passed on because... Um, and, and I think it comes more when, when you look at some of these historians. Their point is that uh, racism and discrimination are modern illnesses, which um, we need to uh, bring knowledge to people, education. The responsibility, I think, it lies down in early encounters you know, with the African continent by, you know, by Western um, researchers and uh, um, um, Western travelers, explorers, and at the same time, um, through colonization, a lot of things that were good about the continent that was never taught. So we need to modify education system. And I think after independence, some of the African leaders like Kwame Nkrumah did very well to lay down the foundation. So way, um, way earlier in my education in high school, we were being taught a lot on African history, very impressive facts that were brought to our attention. And that is what really made it more of a, a shocking situation for me when I first came and I realized that there's just so little that Americans know about Africa. It is just unfortunate that we, we are portraying African-American history as if it has to begin with the slave trade, um, um, the slavery. It has to go beyond the heritage of empires and African rulers who were able to define their environment with um, creativity, with aspiration. They were involved in um, civilization of Egypt. When you look at it, uh, when you look at the pyramids, they were actually designed and built by Africans who had actually moved from the Nile, uh, from uh, inner Africa towards the Nile for the sake of, of, of um, water to be able to continue to develop themselves and grow um, and feed themselves. So in the course of it, they designed a whole lot of things. And I think it would be good for African-Americans to realize that their, their roots are much richer than what they have been taught to and for all Americans and for Africans. It, it, it will open new doors for us. The people will start to believe in our potential. So I think we need to change the press. We need to get more writers. We need to look at African historians, what they've written. We need to look at European historians with the new information that is really um, unfolding the true um, uh, way of life of Africans even before colonial days. We are going to do that in okay. part two. So we are going to round up the show today. Again, Hannah, um, you are, I thank you for coming uh, to Africa Express. And I look forward to seeing you again to continue this discussion. Thank you for staying with us today. And please do stay tuned watching us on this channel. Thank you very much for your